Are you new to RVing and want to learn about the basics of solar? Hi, I'm Jen Grover, and on this week's episode of Tab Talk, I'm going to share with you the basics of solar for your RV. Stay tuned. I want to start off this week by thanking everybody who joined my first live stream last Sunday. We had a great time, answered a lot of questions, and I hope everybody had fun. If you happen to miss the live stream, there's a replay available and I'll put that link in the description below. And while we're talking about it, I wanna let you know that every week, anytime I show a product or I'm talking about something specific, I'll try to put a link in the description below the video. I am an Amazon affiliate, so any purchases you make through those links really do help me out. When I got started with my first RV, my first Tab 320 back in 2014, the last thing I wanted to learn about was solar. It was complex, the terminology was unfamiliar, and it didn't seem like something I wanted to bother learning about. However, in 2016, I had the opportunity to work remotely from my tab for the summer. So I really dedicated myself to learning all I could about solar so that I could be self-sufficient and off-grid while I camped. On this week's video, I'm gonna try to demystify some of the solar terminology and share just the basics with you. Let's get started. The question you really need to start with is how often will I be camping without shore power? And from there, you can make a decision. But if you're new to camping, go ahead and camp a few times first so that you know what type of camper you are. Will you camp with electricity or won't you? A basic solar setup includes your solar array, which will be your solar panel or panels, your solar control charger, and then the cable that you connect from the controller to your battery. A good rule of thumb for how many solar panels or how many watts you need is how big your battery bank is. If you have a 75 amp hour battery, a 100 watt panel should be sufficient. Solar panels are sized by watts. A typical size might be 100 watts or 200 watts. On a Tab 320, the Sunflare solar panel on the Boondock package is 105 watts. If you have two six volt golf cart batteries with around 225 amp hours, then you'll want closer to 200 watts of solar. The sun flare panels on the Tab 320 really represent some of the newest, most cutting edge in solar technology. They're designed to perform a little better in shade because they wire each cell in series. What that means is the whole panel doesn't get shut down if just part of it is shaded. Another thing that the sun flare panel does really well is handle hotter temperatures. The flexible panels that you mount permanently used to not do as great in hot temperatures, but Sunflare has a technology that helps them perform a little better. There are a few things that can have an impact on how much output you get from your solar setup. Location, meaning how high in latitude you are. The time of year, meaning how close we are to the sun. Summer's obviously gonna get you a better output. Also shading, shading will limit how much sun directly reaches your panel. And the last thing people don't think about is temperature. It's surprising, but cooler temperatures are actually better for solar than hot temperatures. Another thing that people often ask about when it comes to solar panels is if I have a portable panel, how do I secure it? Most people will use some type of chain and lock. I use a cable lock and I'll put a link for that in the description below. Your solar controller selection should be something that works for you. You wanna make sure it's the right size controller for your solar array setup. So if you're using a 100 watt panel, you shouldn't run into too many problems with most solar controllers. The choice you'll have to make is whether you want an MPPT controller or a PWM. PWM is the older technology. I've always chosen an MPPT controller because if you're running more than one panel and run them in series, it will charge faster. Most solar panels will come with these MC4 connectors at the end. MC4 connectors are the closest thing we have to universal connectors in solar, and they actually aren't universal, but they are a little more common than some of the proprietary methods out there. You're gonna wanna figure out how you're gonna connect your solar controller to your battery. You can do something temporary like alligator clips that clip directly to your battery terminals, or you can do something a little more permanent. I'm gonna be installing a permanent solar port on Maddie Ross, and I'm using a Furion brand solar port. Basically, it's just a port that has a connector that matches for two wires, and you're able to plug it in. And then when I'm done, I press this little pin and it pulls right out. 
a ZAMP solar port or an SAE port, whichever you know it by, may be an easy option for you too. It's also a two pin connection. Whatever port you're using, just make sure you're using the right size wire to connect it to. Typically you'll want 10 or 12 gauge wire to connect your solar port to your battery. When you're configuring your solar setup, you'll wanna make sure if you get an extension cable that you get one that has something that works for both ends of the wire. For example, on the extension cable I have in my hand, on one end are MC4 connectors. They'll connect directly to my solar panel. Bare wire would be used to connect directly to your solar controller. There's a lot more technical information I could have gone into, but I really wanted to keep this basic to help people who are brand new to solar. Are you already using solar? I'd love to hear what brand panel and what brand controller you're using and how effective they've been. So let me know in the comments below. I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, please be sure to let me know in the comments below, hit the thumbs up and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.